Hey everyone, welcome back to Onyx Pages for my seven calorie shell book review extravaganza. One of the things that I've learned this year is that I just need to film when I can and if that means batch filming, then it means batch filming. But I hope you appreciate the costume change for the next couple of books. This is my mess in a bottle dress. And what I love about it is that it has affirmative statements all the way down the back. And this makes me feel very, it's like, it's like wearing a psychic hug. And I love this. I love this dress. Um, so yes, I am really enjoying my mess in a bottle. This is not sponsored. This is not sponsored content, okay? Um, the reason why I love Mess in a Bottle is because a lot of the things, a lot of the sayings on the sweatshirt uh, and the like, the t-shirts and the dresses are things that I would love, like I, the things that I say, right? Things that I say, things that I wanna say, things that I wouldn't say but should say and would prefer my t-shirt to say um, like there's this one I didn't bring it with me but Tommy and I both have matching sweatshirts that say as strong as the woman beside me like just you know so many beautiful things right um, there's another one that I want to get that is a it's a bodysuit that says um, sometimes you just need to be reminded that you're cute AF or something like that or cute AF Anyway, um, link is below. You can check out all of their amazing things. Get on their newsletter because um, they're very prolific. So there's always stuff that you can find. Like there's one, there's a bunch of, there's one, I think one COVID one that just says, just stay six feet away and put on your mask or something. Just, I wish I lived closer so that I could get stuff like faster without customs. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's worth the price. I am here to review Root Magic by Eden Boyce. Royce, Eden Royce, <laughs> see you in a minute. I am glowing because of my mom and my dad and their DNA, but also I am glowing because I just got off the phone and I got an opportunity to talk to a friend of mine who is at um, Worldcon right now. And in the lobby was Cherie Renee Thomas, who is a guest of honor at Worldcon right now. And she is the one who edited the first collection of Afrofuturism speculative fiction called Dark Matter 1 and Dark Matter 2 and also Nine Bar Blues. I need to make sure that I got the name of her co her collection correct. Nine, is it nine, nine? Just wanna make sure I got it right because if I didn't, we have to correct that. Nine Bar Blues. Yes, Nine Bar Blues, Stories from an Ancient Future, which was published by Third Man Books and that came out in 2020 and it's her first fiction collection. So Cherie Renee Thomas is gorgeous in like, like body, mind and spirit. I have had the opportunity to read like some of her works, but also, um, I think it was last year, or was it this year? I think it was last year, but I was asked to participate in a reading of um, the verses of Earthseed along with a group of friends of Octavia E. Butler. It was such an incredible pleasure. And in my group of readers, um, we had like Cherie Renee Thomas, and I, I got the opportunity to hear her read earth seed and she's just like her her poetic her poetic voice is so powerful and i had read in my mind the same verses that she read but then when she delivered them they were like spells like oaths like incantations and i remember listening to her and just like i think she at one point said we are earth seed like three little words 
but the way that it came out of her spirit was just amazing. So I'm so proud and excited that she was able, that she was chosen as the guest of honor, one of the guests of honor for a Discon 3, and that she was one of the um, goddesses of ceremony for the Hugos, along with the amazing Andrea Hairston, who herself is inc an incredible writer, just poet, writer of plays, writer of songs, amazing, um, writer of the master, master of poisons. Um, and I wish I could have seen the two of them together, but I feel compersion. I feel, which is a, a term that comes out of the polyamory community. It's like when you derive pleasure at people have like enjoying each other and not, not feeling like jealous or envious of it. So just seeing the glow of everyone who has had the opportunity to like interface with her and also to see her beaming through the phone was just amazing. I also had the opportunity to meet Tessia Burke who wrote Let, Let's Play White and Maurice Broadus who wrote Buffalo Soldier. And I was also introduced to another writer, Danian Perry, whose work I'm not, I think I have the name, I hope I have that right, um, who I haven't had the opportunity to meet as yet um, or to read. So it was just a really beautiful call uh, that I got. And so now I'm gonna talk about root magic, um, but that's why I'm smiling so much because I'm feeling full of love. Um, so root magic. Root Magic by Eden Royce. This is her debut, um, and her debut, excuse me, middle grade, because she's written, uh, I believe, some horror elsewhere. Uh, but I haven't read, I haven't read her horror yet. So um, I'm just going to read the synopsis. It is 1963, and things are changing for Jezebel Turner. Her beloved grandmother has just passed away. The local police deputy won't stop harassing her family. With school integration arriving in South Carolina, Jez and her twin brother Jay are about to begin the school year with a bunch of new kids. But the biggest change comes when Jez and Jay turn 11 and their uncle Doc tells them he is going to train them in root work. Jez and Jay have always been fascinated by the African-American folk magic that has been the legacy of their family for generations especially the curious potions and powders Doc and Gran would make for the people on their island. But Jez soon finds out that her family's true power goes beyond small charms and elixirs and not a moment too soon. Because when evil, both natural and supernatural, comes to show itself in town, it's going to take every bit of the magic she has inside her to see, uh, to see her through. Debut author Eden Royce arrives with a wondrous story of love, bravery, friendship, and family filled to the brim with magic, great and small. Um, and I, I enjoyed this read. Uh, the So Solar Power, the Afrofuturism Slow Reading Club on Facebook, which I founded in 2015, uh, which I co-host with Isis from Sista Sci-Fi, as well as Chloe, the booktuber Thistle and Verse, um, we read Root Magic this year and also uh, Chloe interviewed Eden Royce and that interview I believe you can watch on my channel um, but it was wonderful. I also annotated and um, annotated this book. I don't know if you'll be able to see that but I used washi tape and I also used let me let me get in front of your face because why not? So I used washi tape that had like roots, see, and, ye and yellow underlining. Um, let me see if I can find something. I also had <laughs> wrote had a lot of predictions <laughs> um, uh, because there were a lot of moments when I, you know, during my read of this that I felt like this is amazing and I need to write about it and 
Aww. <laughs> Lots of really sweet, sweet things. So it um, was definitely well annotated and this book was well loved uh, by me. I think at the end I, yeah, I wrote at the end of this. Very well done. So I definitely enjoyed Root Magic. Go New Lens, hello. All right, so I'm going to take you through a very hopefully brief seven carry shell review of Root Magic. I made notes in my Melanin Eclectic reading planner and maybe I'll show that to you too at the end. Um, so in terms of the world building, the world building I gave a full cowrie shell because it was creepy, it was textured, it was so lush, right? Like there was like, there's a little, there's a home and then a little cabin, like a, a where Doc would do all of his root work. And so in the cabin, it was so atmospheric. You can even like hear the creaking wood, the, the wind flowing through the um, uh, little spaces in the planks of wood and like the sound of dust and bottles of tinctures and potions and um, you could hear the rustling of the trees and the grasses and the swamp and just there was so much atmosphere in in this and I believe I hybrid read this so I got even more of that um, there most of our time is spent in the town where Jez lives um, and there's a little bit of, of like a little bit of a school her school experience not too too much of it mostly I think the climax takes place in her house in this little cabin and behind the house but you know even if you can see me moving my hands right like that is testament of um, an illustrative world that was so well designed that I can actually picture it in my mind um, there was just so much supernatural power and creepiness and and humor uh, in in it all. There's there was also um, an other world, a very literally otherworldly aspect of the story that was so wonderfully done and powerful. So a full cowrie shell for that. And by textured, I mean that you know how some stories kind of stay on the ground. This didn't, right? There were multi-dimensional moments above and below layers, just lots to the magic that she drew for us. Um, for a point of view, the main character is Jez. We see this world through her eyes. She's young. Um, she doesn't have all of the authority of even being a teenager or an adult. And so, you know, she had to has to follow rules in the house and has to deal with not knowing very much about her power and not being old enough to have access to it and maybe not dealing with it in the best of ways and maybe making mistakes and so seeing the story through her eyes and from her experience um and right at the beginning of the book she experiences getting bullied at school and so you see this vulnerability that she experiences and her desire to connect and have friends and be cared for and all of that was just there and it really made my little eight-year-old girl deep inside me very happy to read this story and to see how her relationships sort of blossom but also to see how even a young girl with magic can save the day or at least try to. So one full cowrie shell for point of view. Then um, the next one was the magical elements and a full full carry shell for that. Uh, one, I have to put the book down because I need both of my hands to talk to you about the magical elements. We have haints, we have ancestors, we have like rustling in the grass. Oh my God, what is that, right? We've got shadows and and like smells and sensations. We've got like kitchen magic. We have the magic of recognizable comfort foods. We have so much magic in this world. And one of the things that I love about, like one of the, the tropes that I enjoy, or at least kind of 
contexts maybe not trope but contexts i enjoy is like for kind of forbidden or taboo magic in plain sight so you know the family that does the root magic that everybody goes to to get spells and stuff but that the community doesn't necessarily appreciate and that the community discriminates against or considers to be like an underclass so it's one of those things um I, I enjoyed seeing how this family kept the community alive through the ability to um, receive magic and receive all of the rules and the, the concoctions and the spells and to distribute that, to distribute them. And we start off this book at a funeral um, of one of the characters who was a stalwart in the community. And, um, you know, it was, it was really interesting to me to... To, to get that right away. Like the first line is when Gullah people die, and I should say that the community that we're talking about is the Gullah Geechee community um, or the Gullah community and even talks about that in her interview um, where she shares a little bit about her experience of being a part of the community and about uh, inheriting knowledge and lore and about boundaries in terms of how much shows up in her work and what doesn't. Um, and she's also got such a soft, resonant voice. It's really beautiful to hear her talk um, about this. But listen to this first line. When Gullah people die, babies in the family get passed over the coffin so the dead person won't come back from beyond to take them away. Now, this is really, this is the first line of the book. So obviously you've got an immediate introduction to magic, ancestral power, traditions, and all of that. And when I read this, I actually wrote a note. Um, I'll show you. So I wrote a note because I was just like, oh my gosh, do we have like Gullah in our family? Because I remember my, my auntie telling me that she has this memory of being a child and going to a funeral and being picked up and passed over a coffin. She remembers that as a child, right? She doesn't know why, no one ever talked about it, but she remembers, and this happened in Trinidad. That's pretty cool, huh? So anyway, um, you know, I think that for those of us in the diaspora who might not know our ancestry or our ancestors, it's really interesting when you read fiction and then you see these, these references and then you're just like, oh my gosh, this is, is this really a Gullah tradition? Is that is that real? And it is real. So where did that come from? If it happened to my aunt, you know, did it happen all the time in Trinidad? And is there a, a joint ancestry between like the Gullah folks and Trinidadian folks? And what does that even mean? So it like from the first line, I was like, wow, this is going to be educational. Um, so anyway, Magical elements, really, really powerful. One whole calorie for that. Um, in terms of the characters, I gave half a calorie shell for the characters. Um, I really enjoyed them. There were a couple of characters that I wanted to hear more about and understand more about. So I was left feeling like I wanted to know more about Doc. I wanted to know more and get more texture out of Jez's mother, who, you know, had to deal with the death of her mother right at the beginning of the book and has sort of a an uncomfortable relationship with the family's history of magic and some legitimate fears and hopes about her children in relation to magic. So I wanted more of that. Um, the themes, I gave a full calorie shell for the themes because the themes of, you know, the forbidden taboo magic, changing in the community, racism, police, police brutality, um, systemic change, um, classism, you know, losing ancestral land, like, all of those kinds of themes, the hereafter, um, the passing down of spiritual traditions, food as magic, so many powerful themes, um, um, dealing with bullying, right? Finding a, being yourself in school, meeting a friend, um, that was all, those, all those themes were taken up. And one of the things that I should say about the magical element, um, is that there is a, um, it would be like a big, big, big spoiler to share this, so I will not do that because I know that many of you don't like spoilers. 
Um, but there is, um, there is a mystery here that gets solved and it gets solved in the second third of the book, which means unlike it being an aha moment at the end, you actually get time to deal as the reader to deal with the solving of that mystery and then the resolution and transition that comes after the mystery has been solved. Like we get to sit in the solving of the mystery and we get to experience the glory of the answer being provided. And I think that was really, really beautifully done. The pacing of that was really well done. Um, in terms of relevance to the Black Queer Lives, I don't recall, and I just might be wrong, I just don't recall whether there are any queer characters in here. Um, so I can't really comment on that. So I'll just say no calories because from, I read this a while ago and I have no memory of any kind of queer characters or any interruption of queer identities. And so if you've read the book and you remember that there were some, please put them in the comments because I just don't recall. So I'm just going to say zero for now because even if they were, they weren't enough for me to remember, which says something. And then the final calorie is uh, the reading experience. And I will just say that the reading experience for Root Magic was wonderful. I enjoyed it. You saw my annotations. I enjoyed the reading. I enjoyed listening to it. I enjoyed the conversation that we had in the Solar Powered Afrofuturism Slow Reading Group. I enjoyed the interview with Eden Royce. I would commend this to you. Um, this was published by Walden Pond Press. And if you've read this and you want a sequel, let the publishers know because I demand more of this world. I want more middle grade uh, written by Eden Royce. It was, it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, I just enjoyed this book. It was really, really good. Really, really, really good. All right, that is all I'm gonna say for now. I hope that you enjoyed my review and discussion of Root Magic. Oh, what I should also tell you is that the cover is also quite beautiful. I'm not gonna walk all the way around to get to you, but uh, the cover is great. So you should Google it and take a look. It's, the colors are beautiful. I love the kind of fluorescent yellows and greens and the bright um, blues and turquoise. There's some purple here. You can feel, you can feel the magic and it almost looks like um, Jez and Jazz are like floating. Yeah, it's just so sweet and such, a lovely book. Read Root Magic. Yes. Okay. Um, so if you have watched this all the way to the end, I would love for you to put in um, an emoji that has both like something that reminds you of roots and plants and then something that reminds you of like magic. And it could just be roots and plants, but if you've got like potions or something, you know, galaxies and such. Uh, please put it in the chat or even just something that's like green and blue and purple all together. So something like that. Have fun with it. Uh, and yes, I am going to be back. The next book, wow. The next book that I'm going to review is Sorrowland. I'm not ready. <laughs> So I will see you in the next video to talk about Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to read with purpose and I'll see you in a minute.